Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Shimori TV. Join me this morning as I'm out and about. Hopefully we find something interesting and hopefully there's lots to learn about. So I think one of the most incredible things about Shimori is its diversity. If you have a look around us, we've got like six different species of antelope all in the same area. It's phenomenal. There's impala, zebra, waterbuck, there's warthog, kudu. It's just amazing. Everyone's out, everyone's feeding beautiful time of the year to be out. So if you take a map of South Africa and you draw a line down the middle, north-south, Shimori is pretty much on that line, very close to the southeast coastline of South Africa. It's a very important part geographically because that's the intersection line of what's known almost as the 500 millimeter ISO height. So essentially where South Africa gets 500 millimeters of rain per annum. And that line divides the country also pretty much east-west. We on that line, and for that reason, most of your biomes in South Africa, and a biome is, a, is an area that hosts its own specific species of plants and animals and also microclimates, we on that line and all of those biomes converge in, in this region in South Africa. So the diversity here is unbelievable. I've never seen anything else like it. I've uh, just seen the top of a couple of ears and heads of what looks like a nice herd of giraffes. I'm going to move a little bit closer. I'm in a beautiful aggregation of giraffe journey of giraffe or tower of giraffe. So this looks mainly like a breeding herd predominantly. You can see it's mainly all females here and youngsters. So giraffe are not only the tallest land mammal, they're also the largest ruminant, which is the animal that regurgitates and chews the cud. As you can see, there's a number of animals here that are busy, just busy regurgitating. They're not actually feeding. A big bull giraffe, just over 5 meters, 5.5 meters in height. And I think the, the tallest recorded one was 5.9 meters tall, which is actually <laughs> a meter taller than a, a double-decker bus. So it's, a, it's a very, very tall animal. So just at a glance, looking into this group of animals over here, it's quite easy to differentiate males from females. The females, if you look from the back or the front, the horns point slightly inwards and they're quite pointy and tufted with black hair at the ends. And the horns are quite narrow and, and slim. Where if you have a look at bulls, the horns tend to be much thicker and they travel straight up and they're flat on top. Generally, the older bulls that have been fighting for a while, the horns will actually be bald on top. They won't have the tufts of hair. The giraffe are feeding off of these sweet thorn acacias and you, we'll have a look closer at those sweet thorn acacias in a little bit but you'll see how formidable those thorns are but how adapted these giraffe are to actually feeding without getting injuries or harm to themselves. Uh, first off they've got nice bristly tough outer lips and then they have a very very long prehensile tongue about 45 centimeters in length that can actually get in around the branches and then pull back and strip the leaves off and leave most of the thorns behind. They've also got very, very long eyelashes to protect their face when they are feeding in thorn bushes. So each giraffe has got its own unique little pattern and even color about it. 
You can see this the one female over here is very, very dark. So it's not always the case that an old bull will be very dark or a, in this case a female will be light. She's much darker than most of the other females. So a lot of it is genetics as well. But the one thing that all giraffe have is very, very white ears. Again, as we saw in some other animals where they have their follow me signals, this is a giraffe's communication and follow me signal where a giraffe's body might be hidden completely by bush and scrub and trees and that long neck sticks out with the ears. It's those white ears that will allow another giraffe to see it from miles away and thus keep the, the herd in communication and in contact with one another. And again, as we look on all of these giraffe over here, there's a whole bunch with the red bull ox peckers busy uh, cleaning and uh, removing ectoparasites from them, which is a, a good, again, a beneficial relationship and also ready to warn of any potential threats or dangers that will assist the giraffe in, in being alert. And you can see as all the animals are busy feeding, there's always one or two that are busy looking around, making sure that they're constantly checking for predators. So I think a, a fascinating thing about giraffe is its uh, physiology, its makeup, how it's made. The adaptations that a giraffe has to have in order for it to have such an incredibly long neck with an incredibly long set of legs. Um, they've got very, very tight skin covering the legs to help with circulation so that you don't have blood pooling in the bottom of the feet. They've got a massive, massive heart in relation to their size in order to be able to pump the blood all the way up to the brain. It's one thing to be able to get the blood all the way up, but how do you stop it from causing damage when that giraffe puts his head down to drink? There's a very intricate network of blood vessels that actually slow down and dissipate the blood before it enters the brain. And that prevents the massive rush of blood going through to the brain that can actually cause damage and uh, potentially kill the animal. So we've, uh, we've spent a beautiful morning out here with these giraffe as they've slowly been moving through this area busy feeding. They've all now moved off and we're going to head, head around that way. So I just want to show you guys what the giraffe has to deal with on a daily basis in order to get its breakfast. This is the sweet thorn acacia and you can see these incredibly large, powerful, thick, incredibly sharp thorns. And the giraffe has to feed out of here. But like I was saying, with a couple of those adaptions it manages quite well. Like the ability to put that prehensile tongue into the bush and pull backwards. Like that, it then gets leaves with no thorns. The cicacia tree is incredibly nutritious and for that reason it needs to protect itself from being overgrazed. But prehensile lips and tongues allow the animal to get just enough leaves out of here that gives it food and then moves on to the next one. So in here as well, there's the seeds and the seed pods from the acacia and this is also incredibly nutritious. So giraffe, kudu, uh, they'll be feeding, even monkeys will be feeding off of this, it's very nutritious. So the defense mechanisms of this tree are incredibly well suited to allowing it to be utilized for food but not overutilized. Obviously its first form of defense is the thorns to stop animals from overgrazing and damaging the, the, the tree and the bushes too much. And one of the next forms of defense it has is being able to increase the tannin content of the leaves. In other words, making the leaves taste bitter so that the animal doesn't want to feed off of it anymore. It'll feed off of the tree for a few minutes, the tannin content will get pushed up, the leaves will start tasting bitter and the animal will move off to the next tree. Well I hope you enjoyed the time with me out in the bush. I know I saw a lot, I hope you did too. Don't forget to hit the notification bell, like, subscribe and stay tuned for more Shimwari TV. See you around soon.